welcome to the Hooniverse. Now the Doctor has had many faces, many lives, and there's one that remains an icon to this day. The Tenth Doctor, portrayed by David Tennant for the first time back in 2005, has had plenty of adventures. Even after his original time in the TARDIS ended back in 2010. He's had so many that since he's returned to our screens once more, I thought I'd dive into 10 Tenth Doctor stories you may not know. After a battle with some angry Lombards, the Doctor and Rose returned to Earth's power estate, but the TARDIS skipped a time track and left the Doctor stranded in Rose's home block for days in what would be seconds for her. The Time Lord made his way to Rose's boyfriend's place. Mickey Smith was a man messed about by Rose, with her feelings for the Doctor obvious and vice versa. The Doctor wasn't just an intergalactic hero to Mickey, but the tall, dark and handsome stranger that took his girlfriend from him, whether he meant to or not. The Doctor rocked up and stayed with Mickey for a few days, but each day Mickey became more tired of his antics as the Gallifreyan played football, stopped Mickey from a potential of female company, and confused a toothbrush with a sonic screwdriver. In the end, when Rose returns, the Doctor invents a problem with the TARDIS so that Rose and Mickey can reunite after realising Mickey deserves more. Now if this story sounds familiar, it's because these comic pages were adapted for the screen, but for Matt Smith's version of the Doctor, and with a complete stranger called Craig Owens. It's a story most Whovians know, but not like this. The Doctor answered a summoning from the Forest of Cheem and discovered the guests of Platform One, previously seen featured in the 2005 TV story The End of the World, were disappearing. The Doc stopped a cyborg called Montadum Slem from harvesting the forest, but they vanished. Intrigued, he and Rose set off to find out who was responsible. The Doctor followed the trail and fought evil and soon realised Cal was missing. Then the Chosen Scholars also disappeared amidst a university full of mind-destroying viruses. Mr and Mrs Paku disappeared before the Doctor could warn them of their human hunting actions. The Doctor and Rose locked onto the kidnapper in the TARDIS, using the residual energy from the transmat beams to track him down. And as they did this, Rose was kidnapped by a transmatting intruder, as the final remaining guest needed. The Doctor wasn't taken as he looked like this back on Platform 1. The once guests now prisoners are faced by a vengeful elf of Balhoon. He believes his brother, the Mox of Balhoon, was abandoned to die alone in agony when the Platform 1 shields failed. Elf feels he may take his revenge out on the survivors who let the Mox die. The Doctor arrived undetected by the Elf's bioslaves, defeats them, and releases the prisoners with his sonic screwdriver. His plans thwarted, the elf breaks down in tears, mourning the loss of his brother. The doctor asks the others to simply go easy on him. To Rose's surprise, the former prisoners rally round the elf with offers to make a film of the Mox's life, grow a garden in his memory, and offers of sponsorship and free travel for visitors. The mystery solved, but it's worth noting there's always an adventure to be had even after the credits roll. The Doctor took Rose to Phosphorus to meet the first humans in history who travelled through hyperspace. He found the human pioneers had been reduced to a life of slavery by a super intelligent 90 year old cat called Mitzi, who had drifted through hyperspace and gained intelligence and superiority. The Doctor stopped her from torturing the population into slavery and foiled her attack on Earth by breaking her connection with hyperspace, which reduced her to a normal cat. Now this is the timey-wimey bit. The Doctor discovered from Rose that Mitzi was actually her childhood cat. He left the cat on the power estate in the 1990s to be adopted by a young Rose where the cat would be named Puffin and live for another five years. The Doctor visited the Slough of the Disjointed Planets, a space populated by warlike races renowned for their brutal conflicts. There he encountered the dying Warkeeper, the ancient controller of the population. To find a worthy successor, the Warkeeper scanned the Doctor's mind for the identity and location of the greatest leader in the cosmos. He chose Brigadier Alistair Gordon Lethbridge Stewart, now a retired member of UNIT, one of the Doctor's oldest friends. Now in his late 70s, he refused to accept the Warkeeper's demands and as an alternative, the Warkeeper chose Mike Yates, but accidentally summoned another man with the same name and not the unit officer the Doctor and the Brig knew well. Rivals of the dying Warkeeper infiltrated his helpers before his death and passed on to Yates the Keeper's control device, the War Keeper's Crown. And with the weak-minded Yates under the control of the Crown and the many forces of the disjointed planets, the deceased War Keeper's rivals planned to control the conflicts. 
the controlled Yates transported himself back to Earth along with many orcs, hawks, and other fearsome creatures. The Doctor and the Brigadier, with an army of Brigadier clones the Doctor created with technology at the Slough, returned to the Earth to defeat the demon hordes and free Yates from the Crown's control. And with the danger past, the Doctor and the Brigadier relived their old glories and said their goodbyes. Although the Brigadier expected to see the Doctor again. Sadly, the Brigadier passed away before he could meet the Doctor again on screen. Rather, he met Sarah Jane Smith for his final outing, especially as the Cyberman Brigadier idea is just a bit naff and disrespectful to many. Much later in the Doctor's life, he was trying to avoid his prophesied future. The Doctor visited the Magellan world and saw a door to the Cathedral of Contemplation. He went to the Cathedral and, out of curiosity, broke a barrier intending to stop timelines to cross and bumped into his fourth incarnation. Now, as a punishment for his behaviour, the Abbas confiscated his sonic screwdriver. And when the Daleks attacked the cathedral, the two doctors brought the pilgrims to safety. The tenth doctor tried to prevent his earlier self from confronting the Daleks, but he was unsuccessful. So he stayed to help the pilgrims get out the place by making them crawl through the air ducts after Cavell had given him back the sonic. As he was doing that, he had a vision of the fourth doctor being imprisoned by the Daleks and forced to try and move the cathedral. He reached him and joined him to the console so that the combined effort of their two minds could be successful in moving the place through space and time. The two doctors first arranged for the pilgrims to get out safe and alive, and then directed the time corridor to Earth in the year 5 billion, thus leading the Daleks to their destruction. Released by Jorah, the two doctors then managed to escape and trap the Dalek Supreme in the collapsing cathedral, and as he prepared to leave the TARDIS, the fourth doctor encouraged his tenth incarnation to find a new companion inspiring the Tap Doctor to continue delaying his trip to the Oud Sphere. Afterwards, the Doctor stayed at the Festival of the Phosphorus Carousel. So, we're halfway through our dive into the Tap Doctor stories you may not know. Have there been any so far you haven't heard of or forgot about? If so, hit that subscribe button and like if you're a fan of the video so far. Right, let's look at the next story. Seeking to take his mind off things, the Doctor went to 22nd century Earth to visit a zoo spotting a krakush, a rare specimen with the ability to pass through solid matter by destabilizing molecules. The doctor witnessed its theft at the hands of surviving Daleks. While he was left at the mercy of animals whom the Daleks had induced into a frenzy to provide a distraction. Making his escape on a volge, the doctor pursued the Daleks to the hideout, where he rescued the krakush, which used its ability to save the doctor from Dalek firepower. Now, after making their presence known, the Daleks deployed their specially created proton cannon against humanity, rendering everyone intangible, just as the Doctor and the Krakush were. It was the Daleks' intent to take over Earth, unhindered as humanity would be left to waste away. However, unbeknownst to the Daleks, the Doctor had made a partnership with the Krakush, and, with its power, was able to enter the Daleks' base and modify their cannon to turn against them whilst restoring humans to their solid state. Judging their failure as an unacceptable outcome, the Daleks self-destructed. Whilst looking for his copy of It's a Wonderful Life, the Doctor accidentally released the wire, who he forgot to tape over after their previous encounter. He tracked it to a small suburban house where Alice Wu helped him to recapture it. The Doctor then joined Alice's family for a Christmas dinner and a movie. Whilst travelling alone, the Doctor became caught in a timeline that Paradox triggered as a result of his encounter with the 13th Doctor in Old Friends. The 1969 adventure took place during Ten's time with Martha, where Weeping Angels blasted them back in time in the TV story Blink. As a result of this story, where both Time Lords fought Weeping Angels and Autons in the past, Sea Devils now ruled the Earth. He discovered an alternative version of Rose Tyler in 2020, who was a resistance fighter opposing the Sea Devils and persuaded her to come with him to correct the timeline. As he took the TARDIS back to the point of divergence in 1903, it collided with the 13th Doctor's TARDIS, which was making the same journey. The two Doctors stabilised their TARDISes and the Doctor and Rose boarded the future Doctor's TARDIS. The 10th Doctor and Rose accompanied Team TARDIS and Rogue Skiffra Queen as they discovered that the Skiffra had successfully captured Nikola Tesla and Thomas Edison and were attempting to awaken Sea Devils at the Raven Peninsula. After stopping them, the team infiltrated the Skiffra ship to rescue the scientists, and with the 10th Doctor insisting, he rescued them so he could meet them. He, Rose, and the 13th Doctor's companions rescued them and returned to the TARDIS, where the 13th Doctor revealed she and the Queen had successfully sabotaged the ship and dematerialised it before it exploded. During the journey, the 10th Doctor distracted Edison from the TARDIS by asking him basic questions about electricity. And after, the scientists were returned to Earth, 
The term for Doctor left with Rose in his own TARDIS. Before his memory of the paradox faded, the Doctor took Rose to the restored 2020. However, she realised there was nothing for her there, as it was not her timeline, and asked to be dropped off on a planet in need of liberating. And with that, the Doctor lost his Rose once again. Now time catches up with everyone, even the Doctor. His first adventure in the 2005 episode The Christmas Invasion, that's set in 2006, saw the Time Lord fight the Sycorax in his pyjamas and send them packing, only for humanity and Torchwood to murder the once invading aliens. And when the Sycorax wives went looking for their husbands in our solar system, following the failed invasion in 2006, they found nothing but the dust remains of the ship. They landed their own ship in the Caribbean, disguising it as an island called Shadow Cay, which became populated by humans turned into zombies, known as Abstracts, by the Gilfane Craw. In 2009, the Abstracts were used to find the black box recorder of the Sycorax ship so they could discover the truth of what happened to their Sycorax husbands. When it was played back, the Haxan Craw realised that the humans betrayed the Sycorax, the aeroplane containing some of the abstracts that would spread a virus leaving humanity suffering but unable to die was sent off, but Donna Noble stowed away on board and flew the plane back to Shadow Cay. The Tenth Doctor, controlling the abstracts on the ground, overloaded the ship's magma sculptor by making it attempt to copy the whole of Earth and caused the ship to begin to take off and explode, realising that despite his best efforts, the Sycorax wives were not monsters for grieving but instead for their constant dedication to the cause of revenge. Now for our final story, we have a whopper. This is a massive multi-platform adventure that had comics, audios and novels. The Doctor running from his time ending ends up in the dark times with the opportunity to end the concept of death before it begins. The Katuru are the bringers of death. They set the lifespan of creatures in the cosmos from planets to people. The Doctor has multiple massive adventures in this saga, but it all ends up with our hero teamed up with an Ood assassin called Brian, as they launch an attack with a group of mercenaries from his own battleship called Donna against the Katuru. The Time Lord really loses his way and becomes the Time Lord Victorious. He faces great vampires and a new Dalek Empire, as well as two helpings of himself, with the 8th and 9th Doctor working to save their future self, and then defeat the Daleks who create an abomination. Dalek and vampire DNA combined, a creature that can't be killed because it's already dead. The Dalek symbiote. The Dalek strategist ordered for the Dalek drones to be given the symbiont DNA, creating an army of undying hybrid Daleks. And this newly created army was used to invade Gallifrey, whilst the original symbiont was sent to kill the last Katuru, Inyit. The three doctors made a final stand against the Daleks over Gallifrey, assisted by coffin ships of the three undead and eventually decided to crash their ship into the Dalek saucer, in the hopes that the resulting paradox would destroy them. Before their final move was necessary, however, the new army was defeated by Inyit, who used the last of her powers to pass judgement on the entire hybrid Dalek race. And as the Daleks panicked, fearing the judgement might spread to pure Dalek DNA, the Eighth Doctor boarded the Dalek saucer and used a remote detonator to trigger Brian the Ood's explosives in their engines, forcing the saucer into the time vortex and out of the dark times. Evil defeated and the Doctor began to realise, being a winner isn't all it's cracked up to be. So that's 10 Tenth Doctor stories you may not know. There's plenty more adventures this striped suited spaceman enjoyed and we know for sure that there are more to come. So what's your favourite Tenth Doctor story and what video would you like to see me create next? Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.